the fact that like this is a conversation in like the UFO universe that's happening, which is watching all these like hardcore. The fact that I'm still wearing a stethoscope. I just realized Jesus that Christ. my thing fell off. The like hardcore skeptics, <laughs> hardcore skeptics are now. It's just interesting to watch. And again, until I see a UFO, I'm going to be skeptical. Yeah, super skeptical. But, but it's interesting to watch the the gradual shift that's happening in people who are like big time debunkers. Mm -hmm. There is a, like not like okay, I think they're real, and I don't blame them for saying I don't think they're real because it's like really what all your all they're they're still going off of like just people saying it's real. But mm -hmm. the fact that the people saying it, like Marco Rubio mm -hmm. coming out now, did you see that shit? Right, but isn't it interesting? This is my observation. What they're saying is they talk to people who say this. Right, that's everybody. It's including Grush. Grush is saying that he has access to information and he was aware of information. He was aware of things that the public wasn't aware of. And so he wants to be a whistleblower because the public deserves to know about these things. Yeah. But he has no access to it. Well, Rubio said he talked to people in the government who said they had firsthand. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But he talk to people who said they saw the thing under oath though right right but where are those people like I, until those people are right. standing in front of the camera going i was on the spaceship yeah i met the entities they talked to me through telepathy yeah i think we might be close they've got that hearing coming up and mm. i and i and i know that um a lot of the uh, or I like to believe that a lot of the sort of uh, careful wording of things right now is is to protect people who worry that they'll get killed. They have a sense of like, shit, man, they're going to kill me if I tell you this. But because so, he did it, I'm going to come out and say it. And, you know, so they I think they feel like, shit, we've got to be very, very careful to protect these people. I don't see any benefit for any body in the government. To go on statement saying that they've talked to people within the U.S. military who have seen UFOs. What's the benefit there? Like, if it's not true, you're going to look like the biggest dipshit on earth. You're going to be ridiculed. It's going to ruin your yeah. career, potentially, as a politician. So I don't see much of a benefit in them coming out and saying that stuff. That's the part where it's like, I can't trace the how Marco Rubio, what's he going to, the next time he runs... He's going to be like, I'm the guy who got tricked into thinking there was yeah. UFOs. Right. Yeah, it has to hit sort of a wall of uh, public demand, you know, where, where the public demand is like, hey, what is the, enough people are talking about it. There's enough, whether it's Commander David Fravor, or the New York Times article, Jeremy Corbell, all these different, yeah. d different videos that get released where there's enough credible people talking about it that they have to kind of address it. And if someone like a senator, like Marco Rubio, has a conversation with someone when they're saying, yeah, we have crashed UFOs and we've, we have alien bodies and we're hiding it from the people. Yeah, dude. And then that where it gets... And this has been going on for 80 years. Here's the deal. If you are a politician and you realize we've all been briefed on this shit and it is coming out and you, you other people don't have the guts to come out and say it, you realize to be the first politician who came out and told the truth. Now there yeah. is benefit there. Yeah. There's a lot of benefit in like the, the courage to come out and like support whistleblowers. Cause dude, I read an analysis of it. That's so creepy because it points out that U S taxpayer money is being allocated to, if it's true, I'm saying our taxpayer money is getting allocated to, some organizations that are outside the control of the U.S. government, this is and has been doing it for 50, 60 years. This is unconstitutional. Like, you can't do that. Like, what mm. does that mean? That, that means that there is a second power structure within the government, a truly like a secret right. something. And, and that is like, be, like you, you, it, we're paying for it. And, and if you're benefiting from the technology, if you're selling the technology to private contractors and making money off of it, like that, like that's supposed to be for us, 
free energy, whatever it may be. Yeah. So that is where it's sinister, sinister. Is. Well, also imagine if you're the government. Imagine if you're, let's say, the Air Force, and you have control over some vehicle from another planet. Where you, you have... If the, the airport wants jets, they don't make them. They hire someone to make them. They, right. they have a military contractor that has all the engineers and all the expertise, and they hire you know all these people that actually make jets. Right. Right. They need a jet. They buy a jet. So right. if, if they acquire a spaceship, they're not going to hold on to it themselves. They they don't have right. the people to fuck with this thing. They're going to bring it to the people that make those things. They go, hey, you guys make the stealth bomber. Tell me what the fuck this is. Right. <laughs> right. Tell me what the fuck this is. Yeah. Yeah, man. And 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 can we make one? And if we can't make one, can can we figure out how it runs? Yeah. At least tell us how it runs. Do yeah. you have any idea? And I heard that like Jeremy was on my podcast was talking about how uh, they um sorry they uh it's r- apparently um I'm sorry Jeremy if I'm misquoting you this is from me. Mm-hmm. Obviously, like so, forgive me if there's a uh, error in the way I'm saying it, but uh, it like it's compartmentalized. Yeah. So some of the reverse engineering people, theoretically, don't even know that they're looking at wreckage. Yes. That's what Bob Lazar said on my podcast. He said uh, p- part of the problem is like science can't exist in a vacuum. Science is collaborative, and the metallurgy guys weren't talking to the propulsion guys and oh, yeah. nobody talked to anybody you had like a, an area where you're allowed to go and look at the vehicle and you know you were with your other teammate and everybody reported on everything that was said and done and yeah man and it just it was too limited for them to ever really figure out in his belief at that time so we're talking about 1989 if what he's saying is true what he was saying was that they were bringing him to this area and he couldn't tell his wife, he couldn't tell anybody where he was going, and they were flying him to Area S4 where they had this UFO. They didn't have just one, they had multiple ones. And um, this sort of aligns with what Grush was saying. Because I think Grush, what Grush was saying is that there's 12 of them. They have 12. Which is like, like, for real, for real? Or is this, are you guys like sending money to Ukraine you don't want me to know about, so you're showing me this? Like, that sounds so crazy. Yeah, I don't, th- I don't buy the distraction theory because it's like, man, the mm. U.S. government's been doing weird shit with money. Oh, but here's a distraction. What if it's, what if is this is just an advanced drone program? 